welcome to Cricketry. It's the Papare.com. Well, I'm afraid day three of this third test match, it's not looking good at all for Sri Lanka. They're 53 for four. There's still 273 runs adrift. And the fourth day, most probably, will be the last day of this test match. But looking back at this test match, I'm sure everyone watching me would agree that Sri Lanka had their moments. Well, England got to 330 plus in the first innings. It was a good score. And even the Sri Lankans would be pleased that they managed to keep England down from a pretty strong position. England were 220 for three at one stage. The Sri Lankans came back strongly. Sandakan had five. And they then let's take a look what happened afterwards. 170 for one, Sri Lanka, real madness setting. Nine wickets went down for hardly anything in a matter of 111 to 118 balls for just 69 runs. And with it, I thought Sri Lanka blew away the chances. That 96 runs first innings lead was really going to hurt the Sri Lankans. And when England were dismissed for 230 in the second innings, that 90 plus runs that I was talking about really turned out to be an absolute asset to England. Now on the surface, when you look at the SSE pitch, it's always good to bat first. Day two or the inning number two, it's not easy. Three, it's even difficult. And the fourth one is the most difficult one. Average is just 22 runs per wicket on the fourth innings. So Sri Lanka at the moment tottering at 53 for 53 for four. And they have, as I said, a long, long, long way to go. Now, when you look at this pitch and the way the spinners are bowled, particularly the England spinners, I think the Sri Lankans are bound to struggle come day four. A, they don't have the top order, almost the top order gone. And B, the England spinners are bowling brilliantly, supported by Ben Stokes, who's run in and really bent his back. Now, Sri Lanka will be kicking themselves, as I said, for losing those nine wickets. Now, just imagine, had Sri Lanka battered well, Kanwaratna battered brilliantly, Dhananjaya De Silva battered brilliantly, then uh, Kusal Mendis got to 27. But take a look at the rest of the batting card. Single-digit scores. Now, in that, there were top batsmen, there were experienced batsmen who could have really taken Sri Lanka ahead. Maybe had Sri Lanka got to 300 or even equaled England's score, this score of 230 in the fourth innings would have been far more gettable than where Sri Lanka are at the moment. Well, let's give credit to England. Brilliant fielding. Jennings at short leg was outstanding. Take a look at some of the catches he took, particularly Danushka Gunatilaka's catch in the first innings, how he moved with the batsman, and he didn't really take his head away. He did not flinch, just held on to the catch. And there were other sharp chances too. Dhananjali Silva's catch, Roshan Silva's catch. It was simply outstanding. England should be given all the credit for the way and where they are. But let's not forget, test match number two, Test match number three, Sri Lanka had their moments. The sad thing is, Sri Lanka, for some reason, just did not exploit it, just did not make full use of it, and as a result of it, Sri Lanka is facing the embarrassment of a whitewash by England. And mind you, England have not whitewashed a side outside their own country since 1962-63. So it's going to hurt Sri Lanka a lot, losing the one-day series, losing the T20, now on the brink of losing this third test match. This is Roshan Abe Singer reporting for Cricketry on the Papri.com.